All right, now that our object's in the paint room, we have all of our different normal ambient occlusion and curvature maps baked out, it is time to texture. And the way that we're going to do this texturing is with a smart material. Now I already have a smart material set up here for the previous land arch that I did, but I'm gonna remake it so that I can show you how it's done. So the first thing is I'm in my smart materials and I made a custom folder called rock. You can, do, you can make your own folder just by hitting this little plus icon. I'm just going to hit down here to make a new one. And I'm just going to call this one Arid Rock 2. And the way that these smart materials work is that you layer up different colors and textures based on certain conditions, like the convexity or the direction that the surface is facing, etc. So the very first layer is going to just be the base rock layer. So the way this is going to work is that I'm just going to, in my Smart Material Editor, I'm just going to click there to load in a texture. And I'm going to load up a rock texture, specifically uh, this one. And as you can see on our model, we're already getting that rock layer wrapped very nicely around our object. So it's cube mapped onto the object, so that means that it's projected from six different sides and blended between those six different sides, so there's not going to be any kind of stretching based on the UVs. Now if you don't like the uh, repetition of the pattern, you can do two things. You can use the preview options and you can use the magnifying glass to scale it down or scale it up. So I'm going to leave it something like that. Or if you click on this little arrow in the Smart Material Editor, you can change the texture scale. So I'm going to leave it at 100. But then something else you can do is you can tweak the contrast of it with this curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lower its contrast. Whoops. So I'm going to grab this top, this bottom point and move that up so it's a little more, you know, uh, washed out. And you can change this as well. You can make it overall darker, but then make the brights really bright. But I'm just lowering the contrast because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into color and I'm going to modulate that texture with a color. So I'm going to make it kind of a, going to modulate it with this light orange color. Maybe make it a little bit more yellow. All right, that should do it. Maybe a bit more saturated. Tiny bit more. Tiny bit less. Now I can go in here and I actually want to capture some of those dark areas again. Then make this color maybe overall just a little bit brighter. A little bit lighter. Okay. So that's our base layer, that's the color of it. Now we can also load in a depth texture. And what the depth texture is going to do is it's going to add on we're, it's going to allow us to paint new normals on top of this. So if we want to do some very fine detail work, like getting in every single little crack and crevice and pebble on that texture onto our normal map, this is how we can do that. So I can click on depth texture, and I'm just going to load in that exact same image. And hopefully you can see, if I bring up my brush strength a little bit, you can really see that normal coming through. So I'm going to change my tool from brush to fill. And I'm going to increase my depth. And the reason I did that is because the, um, the paintbrush and the fill tool will show you slightly different uh, depth levels. So I'm just using the fill tool because that's what we're ultimately going to use to um, actually paint this entire object. I want to make my color a little bit less saturated. There we go. It may be a little bit brighter. Okay. And that's the first layer. Pretty simple. So then what I want to do is I want to add on another layer. And the reason why I want to add this is because I want now the uh, crevices to be filled with a more red colored stone. So if I go to, let me see if I can just bring up our reference image again. 
go to. All right. So what I want to do is I want to, so we, we want to capture a few different things here. We're going to capture these streaks as well, but right now I want to get some of these redder, darker patches going. And the way I'm going to uh, mask those out is through the concave areas of the model. So I'm going to add layer, and you'll see I'll add this default layer, which looks like chrome. And that's because the metalness here is set to 100%, so I'm going to change that to zero. And then also increase the roughness to 100%, so there's no kind of specularity on it. I'm going to change the color, and this is just going to be a solid color this time. And I'm going to make it a fairly desaturated, but also fairly dark red color. And the big thing to change here is the condition mask. So right now this little square means that it's been set to just apply it everywhere. If I change this to more on concave, then you'll see in our preview it almost entirely goes away. If I increase the degree, then you'll see it start to come out. Now you'll notice that it looks like there's, um, looks like it's affecting the normal map as well, and that's because the depth here is set to 100%. So I'm going to change that to maybe 10%. And you can see where the red is being added. Now we don't want it applied so consistently. So I'm going to do two things. First off, I'm going to put a texture in here. And I'm going to use, say, this one. And what that will do is wherever this, it'll basically cube map this texture around our model. And wherever this texture is light, it will apply this color. And wherever it's dark, it will not apply that color. So if I make this brighter. If I make it, actually it'll be more obvious. If I make it darker, you see it's starting to go away. And if I change the scale, you can start to see that affecting it as well. So that's one thing we can do. And something else we can do is we can turn on edge scattering. And we do that by assigning a texture. So I'm going to assign this texture. And what this will do is that it will cube map this texture and it will use the lightness values from this to push this color past the convexity. So it'll push it into areas where the model isn't concave uh, based on this texture. So as you see, as I increase the scattering, the color starts to spread past the concave areas. And if I make this texture darker, it'll spread even more. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to reduce the overall edge scattering. And I'm also going to reduce the contrast. You can actually put the contrast into the negatives, which I think is kind of strange. Then I might actually increase the con the or increase the contrast of this, our condition mask texture. Maybe make it a little bit larger. As you can see now, the placement of this color is considerably more random, but we can go a step further. We can also then place a mask texture, which will just block out the material or the, the layer entirely. So if I do that, and let's see, one of these work out pretty well. Maybe, it really could be anything. I'll just pick this one just to keep mixing it up. And I'm going to make this very high contrast. I'm going to. And I'm going to also significant, drastically increase its texture scale. Make it overall a little bit brighter. And what that'll do is that just adds another layer of blocking out uh, this color. I'm going to reduce the contrast a little bit, but you can see the difference we get now. It really helps break up the rock texture. All right, let's add on another layer. Now what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on these streaks that we get on the side. So I'm going to add a new layer, and again it will come in with full metalness and no roughness. And this one I'm going to make very dark 
but I'm also I'm going to tint it green a little bit. That may not be the most realistic, but I think it will contrast nicely with the, um, the red layer we just added, but a very desaturated green. Now this layer, I only want it to be on the sides because that's where this, uh, this weathering is happening. So my degree, I can change that to more on sides. If I move my, you can see what we get is we actually get some very interesting shading. Yeah, you could actually make quite a uh, interesting lighting style for your project using this. But that's not what we're trying to do. So I'm going to keep the degree about the same, but I'm going to increase the contrast. Maybe decrease it a little bit. There we go. So it's really only on the sides. And then in the condition mask texture, I'm going to pick out this kind of streaky grunge map. See if I zoom in real close. You'll see that that's done a lot. That's added in a lot of those streaks going vertically. So I'm going to just make this mask a little bit brighter, sort of increase the contrast a bit. Actually, I might increase the texture scale on that, decrease it a tiny bit. There we go. Just make, make the whole thing a little bit darker. And then I'll throw on a mask texture to just block it out in some areas. So I'm going to pick this one because it has large patches of light and large patches of dark. Again, increase the contrast. Make the whole thing overall a little bit darker. Might decrease the contrast a little bit. And as you see, now we're getting these streaks, but they're not being applied so uniformly. There we go. So now if I zoom out, hopefully you can see that we're getting some areas, like right around there, where we're seeing the streaks, and areas around here where we're not seeing them. Might actually decrease that texture scale just a tiny bit. There we go. That should be pretty good. Okay, so that's that layer. Now there's one more layer. And in this layer, we're going to try and get these really dark patches. Like right there and right around in there. So let's do that. Going to add a new layer. And this one I'm going to make a very dark brown. Desaturate a little bit. Make it a little bit more orange. Make it darker. And this layer, the degree, I'm going to put it in the more in shadow. And that will place it in the darker areas of the ambient occlusion map. That's why we baked that out. So if I increase the contrast, then you can see it's only being applied in the crevices and sort of the hidden areas. And that's, it's similar to a um, moron concave, but it's much more drastic and it can be applied to large areas like this if they're more hidden. So we have that. Now in my condition mask texture, I'm going to go back to a rock texture. I'm going to use this one. Okay, so I'm going to increase the texture scale on that. Maybe increase the lightness so it's applied a bit more. And you can see the uh, effect that that's having. Yeah, maybe increase the degree a bit. And then in the mask texture, I'm just going to load in a very soft, cloudy texture just to block some large patches of it. All right, I'm going to save this. 
and you'll see there it is. It looks very similar to the one we had before. And then all we need to do is if we need to make a layer, this layer was for a different object, so I'm just going to make a new one, and I'm going to call this arid arch 2. And then we just fill the layer. All right, and there we go. So it looks like the depth map came across a little strong, so I can go into the layer and I can actually decrease just the opacity of the depth channel. So I'll decrease that to maybe like 60%. And there you have it. So now you can, if we look at our texture editor, we can see this is our color map. We have our normal map, and if we zoom in real close, you can see all the details that were just added. And then we've also got like our, well, our roughness and metalness are, um, we didn't use those at all. But now you have the finished object with all of its textures. So now all that's left to do is you can export the objects and textures, or you can export the texture channels individually to whatever application this model is going to. Or you can go to the render room and we can make a nice render of it. Well, that's going to conclude this uh, series on uh, modeling rocks inside of 3D Code. I hope you found it useful. Uh, and thanks for watching.